PLC Network here at CES 2021, an all online digital event. And we're sitting here with David and Mark here with Kingston. And we have some interesting NVMEs to talk about here, some uh, some solid state hard drives that are coming out from Kingston. Uh, what are we looking at today? We do, we do indeed. If you don't mind, I'll put up a quick shot of uh, what's coming out from Kingston in 2021. By the way, James, thank you for having us on. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. So um, we've got a, uh, so we have two NVMe drives and also one external storage drive coming out from Kingston this year. So we start with NV1. NV1 will be a, our entry level PCIe Gen 3 by 4 uh, SSD uh, with a one to two terabyte uh, capacities. And we're looking at that coming out right around the end of uh, March, beginning of April. Uh, for us, we're still seeing a lot of, um, uh, the, you know, the Gen 4 support will come later. More, more support for Gen 4 will come this year when Intel launches their Rocket Lake platform. Uh, for now, the market is still at Gen 3, and that's where Kingston is uh, mostly when it comes to our NVMe offerings. So NV1 will be our, our entry level, and then we actually have two models above that, so we kind of play in uh, uh, three different lanes. You have the entry level, the mainstream, and then we have a higher performance drive. So um, for this year, we've got the entry level, and then let's go to Ghost Tree, which is our highest uh, performing drive this year. So Ghost Tree will be our first Gen 4 drive, and in this case, it'll be Gen 4 by 4 H now. So we'll hopefully saturate uh, uh, that, that Gen 4 bus there with a performance of 7,000 megabytes per second read and write. And we're going full capacities on this. Uh, so we'll start at 512 gigabyte, uh, 512 gigabyte and one terabyte will be single sided and then two terabyte and up to four terabyte, uh, those will be double sided. Uh, and that's coming out second half of this year. So we're still, uh, we're still in development and uh, we don't have a more firm launch date uh, for that. What are we looking and at for price points on something like this? So yeah, we so we don't have price points established yet. You know, for NV1 because it's entry level, there's a lot of competition there, and you can see that's where Kingston is going to be. Um, there's a lot of price parity, you know, between NVMe and SATA now, and then with more competition, it's just driving you know the prices lower. Uh, so the, the supply of NAND is in good shape right now. So um, I, you know, I, I wish I could give you specifics, but just it'll be very competitive price. And then um, for XS2000, that is our external drive here. Mark's going to uh, talk about uh, talk more about that in a second. But XS2000, that's an external uh, storage device, USB 3.2 Gen 2 controller on board. Uh, capacities are going to be 500 gigabyte, uh, one terabyte, and two terabyte. So we're really aiming that at the at the crowd that wants, you know, more. Uh, they just want more storage uh, to to take with them. And it, it's also capable of working on the new uh, um, platforms from uh, the Xbox uh, Series X and the PS5. Uh, it can play uh, because of the way Sony and Microsoft. Um, manufactured their, their new gen consoles, uh, it can play previous gen games on there. Um, I'm actually using a, a, a different uh, external drive that Kingston launched um, last year on my PS4, and, and I'm uh, uh, even that little bit, it, it's, uh, I'm playing Red Dead Redemption 2 still off that, and, and it loads onto my PS4 so much quicker. I think I knocked 45 seconds to a minute off of um, loading from a disc as opposed to an external, uh, uh, you know, external storage. So, um, yeah, so, so those are kind of the three main offerings uh, from us here. So, uh, Mark, I know you, you, you had some thoughts, uh, especially for XS2000. Uh, oh, it just, uh, it's, it is, uh, you know, you're used to thinking of external drives, thumb drives as being relatively low speeds, you know, uh, uh, perhaps faster than a hard drive in a lot of cases, but sometimes not. Uh, this is actually because it's a USB-C device. Uh, you can get up to two gigabytes per second read off of that. So uh, it is a, a pretty beefy uh, uh, and high performance drive for an external uh, at, at a really nice competitive uh, price point. And at that speed, it almost becomes extended storage, right? You know, when you're matching the external with the internal in many, many devices. 
Um, you, know, you, you can kind of think of it as almost as like extended storage these days. Very true. And um, although the NVMe for the external solutions, it works in so many different scenarios as well, as well as, you know, you know, external bootable solutions booting directly from the USB drive in Linux environments and things like that, uh, all depending on what the user is trying to accomplish. Yeah, I had uh, recently uh, over the holidays, some customers that were um, creating a music video for Duran Duran and sh they shot it all in 6K and they were working off of drives and uh, and an array of uh, some SATA SSDs. And so we got them uh, uh, connected up with some NVMe drives and it cut like a, uh, their render times uh, the, and the time for doing their work uh, by uh, one down to one fifth of what it was. I mean, it drastically increased the performance and, and speed. And they, I think they had to do 107 visual effects shots in one week and, and they ended up being able to get all of them done. It was, Cause the whole thing, everybody was, the whole band was shot in green screen uh, individually uh, because of COVID. Uh, and then they all had to be put back together on stage with each other. Right, so uh, it was a massive undertaking, but uh, going from SATA, even SATA SSDs to uh, NVMe SSDs, uh, in, you know, that's like a five to six times performance increase. Absolutely, especially when you're working with 4K and 8K graphics as well. It's kind of a mandatory thing now to be going the route of NVMe because the other hard drives just won't do it for you. No. Yeah, it ends up being a liability. Uh, hard drives are great for backup. Yes. General <laughs> file storage. You, as long as you have redundancy, they're really terrific uh, for uh, cold storage. Yep. MP3s all the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, even with cameras now, with mobile rigs and everything else, I mean, the whole industry is pushing into the direction, even with, uh, I mean, as you clearly already know, I'm sure, with the uh, micro SDs and SD cards uh, pushing towards into the direction of NVMe for that as well, yeah, because you you need it to, to sustain where we're going with video now. Sure. Well, you know, like uh, some of the like the 6K uh, Blackmagic pocket cinema camera, it, it takes uh, SD cards, takes traditional media, but it also has a nice USB-C port on it. So you can you can just plug an external USB-C drive into it. You have two terabytes of uh, on there, you could uh, record quite a bit of video at 6K even. Absolutely. And it also enables you to be able to take advantage of better formats as well. Because when you're using basic SDs, then sometimes you're locked down into lower bit rates. And, you know, so you're dealing with higher compressions, compressions and not really getting the content you're looking for. Yep. So... Hey. You know, Mark, Mark works a lot with the film industry and, and um, you know, since uh, Kingston is based in, in Orange County and, and Mark lives in the LA area. So for him, it's just a real, real short drive to, to all the studios. You know, maybe Mark can share. Um, we did wor uh, do some stuff on NVMe with a, a Netflix production a few years ago and, and kind of maybe Mark can kind of share a story about how it really sped up uh, their workflow, uh, especially sure. post-production, post especially. That was the, the real benefit there. Yeah, uh, so uh, if you're familiar with the DIT station on set, you know, it's the uh, digital image technologist that's uh, wrangling all the data coming from the camera, right? Uh, so the camera, if you have three cameras shooting, uh, that means that you have maybe three 512 gig uh, or one terabyte cards coming in at lunch from, you know, when they break for lunch, they hand over the data cards to the DIT and then they have to get uh, uh, offload that and, and uh, get copies onto a uh, drive. And they, yeah, I think you typically have to have multiple copies stored at that point uh, before you can, usually they have two copies that are redundantly stored before they can um, uh, format that card and send it back to the camera team. And uh, uh, they were typically, their workflow was going from the uh, flash drive that's uh, coming off the camera onto an array of hard drives. And uh, we uh, set it up so they're putting it onto an array of NVMe drives. And uh, that enabled us to reduce uh, the offload time at lunch uh, by about an hour to an hour and a half, depending on uh, how much data they had to transfer and, and uh, transcode. And uh, uh, so an hour and a half at lunch, an hour and a half at the end of the day, and then we were using uh, NVMe drives 
in an external chassis connected up by Thunderbolt, and they would ingest that back at the stage uh, or at the uh, uh, studio that's doing post. And that would take an hour uh, off of their time as well. And so if you, you know, add it up when you've got a, a set like that where there's 75 to 100 people on set and you're cutting an hour off the time that uh, it takes for the ele electric folks to be able to wrap the DIT cart, um, you know, you, you save between you know, ten to twenty thousand dollars every day on set, and then you know uh, when you're doing the post part, uh, that hour that you save, you've got you know maybe three colorists that are waiting for the data to do dailies. Um, they get that an hour sooner. They're able to get their their work done an hour sooner. Uh, that means that the uh, director and director of photography and the producers can all see their dailies potentially an hour sooner. Um, and if you put more flash drives into the workflow there, you can cut more time off of that. Uh, so we, you know, we found it was saving, you know, uh, at least minimally $10,000 a day on a, on a nice, on a standard Netflix television show, uh, you know, with a month worth of shooting, uh, that's a, a decent savings. And in a lot of cases, it was much more. It does make a big difference. I know that our teams used to, uh, used to use, uh, I forget what they're called. The, 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 External drives with the orange bumpers on them. G something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, G Tech. Uh, G yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, the, the, the G Tech drives and the uh, uh, like uh, all the the a lot of producers still budget a hundred dollars for a yeah. ruggedized hard drive. You know that's because they have a yeah. spreadsheet from the nineteen eighties maybe, and uh, you know they have a hundred dollars budgeted. You know, knock yourself out. Whatever you can get for that. If you spend a little more on on SSDs, you can cut a lot of time off the backside, and, and you know all the people that are, you know, it's like it doesn't save any money if you've got a whole team of people waiting for your data. Exactly. I know that what we're using now is a uh, not to throw other brands out there, the, but a OWC enclosure that uses NVMe. You know, yep. so it's exactly that, and it is night and day. Well, it is we absolutely actually, night and day. We were using um, uh, a Kidio chassis, which OWC acquired a Kidio. So is essentially an uh, OWC product now. Uh, we were, but we had like uh, Thunderbolt uh, three NVMe devices inside there, uh, and uh, you know it was a tremendous uh, time saving, uh, money saving uh, workflow. Yeah, it's good to see how these devices are really making change in the industry and so many industries as well, and all the way down to the consumer level in terms of gaming and just data. Uh, just dependency in terms of being able to boot your computer as fast as you can these days. I mean, that's like the biggest way of drawing people in into NVMe. NVMe is just put their old laptop or desktop up to something new, especially with the new Gen 4. And uh, I mean, you have an instant sell because just the old hard drives, even though they are budget friendly, they just they cannot come anywhere close to living up to the just the performance level of an NVMe and how well it sells itself. So and it's exciting with Gen 4 coming out like this uh, and more and more Gen 4 solutions at least coming out into the market, uh, giving us a kind of a preview of what to expect in 2021. It's it's looking like it's going to be quite the exciting year, especially with Thunderbolt 4 and USB 4 following along with it. Yeah, I, I think this is going to be a really exciting year. You know, 10 years ago, the hard disk drive to SATA SSD was like, whoa, night and day. And now, you know, we're seeing that transition um, of NVMe from uh, uh, SATA SSD to NVMe, uh, NVMe SSD, and then especially to get Gen 4. Uh, you know, we know that adoption from, from a Kingston point of view, we know that adoption is going to take a while. Um, but it's really cool to be able to, you know, and there are platforms out there, AMD Ryzen uh, already supports PCIe Gen 4. And then once Intel comes on board, uh, comes on board this year, then we should really see that adoption, you know, hopefully take off. And, and uh, uh, at that time, we'll be ready with, a, with an NVMe Gen 4 solution in our Ghost Tree, uh, Ghost Tree launch. By the way, that's a, I don't know if I said that before. It's a code name. So um, just code name for now until we uh, uh, get the product name figured out and, and, you know, launch that second half of this year. Perfect. So we're definitely uh, really looking forward to seeing a lot of interesting stuff coming from Kingston this year. 
And uh, this is exciting price points, of course, are you know, mostly TBD at the moment. You know, but of course, if you're watching this video, you can obviously go to Kingston's website and follow them, you know, and and when these products come out, that's going to be the first place you're going to be able to find them before they reach stores. And of course, Kingston is available just about everywhere. So, I mean, you have Best Buy, Amazon, New Egg, take a pick. You're going to find a place that offers Kingston as long as they offer uh, computer peripherals to begin with. But but Mark, David, this has been perfect. This has been a wonderful conversation. And uh, we're really excited about things uh, that are coming from Kingston. We can't wait to see them once they launch later this year. Uh, thank you so much for this opportunity and discussion. Thank you, James. Thank you. Thank you, James. Really appreciate it. If you want to stay on top of all the latest and greatest and or at least the gadgets we cover, remember to subscribe right here. Subscription button. Click it. You're going to want to. There's lots of videos, interviews, previews, all sorts of stuff. Button. Click it.